Hello and welcome back to Monsters, Myths, and Mayhem. I'm your host, Silver. This is my co-host. Chaotically. <laughs> I caught her off guard. It's been, uh, been a whole five seconds into this thing and we're already <laughs> messing up. Well, we had kind of a change in plans this week. We were going to do the Thunderbird, but uh, with the winter storm hitting our area this past week, uh, I kind of decided to change it up and do a winter, uh, more of a winter related monster it's going to be the yuki o yuki ona and as a little bit of surprise also going to be the related because they're extremely closely related with the a lot of the same info and myths the sarara ona i'm probably mispronouncing that way off the japanese is like every week very good pronouncing names uh have you heard of either of those chaotic no i was even trying to be cool and educate myself really fast but no uh, I have not. Surara is a little bit lesser known, but the Yuki Ono is the Snow Woman. It's been adopted into a lot of video games and anime, mostly anime. I mentioned a little bit before, they're both these monsters, people, creatures, are from Japan. And uh, they are known in the mountainous regions where there's a lot of snow. The Sararas more everywhere else. The Yuki Ono, we'll talk about a little bit about the Yuki Ono first. They come from Japan. It's translated into Snow Woman, like earlier. It is said to be a spirit of a beautiful woman who perished in the snow. Usually associated with winter, she is usually deadly when you encounter her. Killing techniques vary from different stories. Sometimes she doesn't kill her prey. Some of the ways that she she can kill you off if you meet her in the mountains. As the legends say, some say she leads travelers astray, leaving them to die of exposure of the cold. Others say she'll cause snowstorms to freeze travelers. Or she appears, sometimes she appears with a child in her arms. You deceptive. And you see a lone woman in the mountains with a child. I don't know if I would go up to her. I don't know that I would go up to her, but I'd definitely be like more inclined to feel worried, I guess. Yeah. Child often wears a Yuki Mino, which is a canonical cone-shaped straw cloak, traditional in Japan. Yuki Ono will freeze anyone who tries to take the cloaked baby from it. Baby is also a monster, though, called the Yukinko. Sometimes it's snowing out and no one's coming outdoors. She'll invade their homes. Just freeze everybody to death. How dare you guys fucking stay inside. She's got to come and kill you just because she doesn't have any visitors. She's like, hey, you've been enjoying this hot chocolate? Probably not. She's got to eat somehow. They uh, say that she uh, eats the life force out of it and just vanishes in the snow. So, like, just sucking the soul out of somebody and just, bye. Yep. Some other people say she drinks their blood as well, kind of like a vampire. I lean more towards the life force. Which I guess the blood is a life force, technically. That's true. Blood is a life force, but like, you know, it's still vampiric. Hopefully I'm saying that right. It's still vampiric to like suck the soul out of somebody. So I feel like that's still like vampire-esque. Kind of yeah. demon-esque, but like vampire-esque. Very similar. Uh, except she doesn't have to be invited in. She can just barge right in the door. Uh, there's been a couple different stories involving them. Uh, there was this one... Where a woman came, there was this hot spring, it's uh, really a hotel, but uh, a place for travelers to stay in the mountains, lodgings, and this woman stopped by during the middle of the night, asked the owner of the place if she could stay for the evening, and she stayed, she stayed by the fire to stay warmed up, ate with them, helped out the owner's wife in the kitchen then once it started snowstorm real bad she went to leave and the owner tried to stop her from going out in the blizzard but as soon as he touched her he felt extremely cold and like the heat was getting sucked out of his body and when he let go the woman just kind of dissipated in mist as she left the door she didn't kill any of them she just happened to stop by she's just like hey what's up i'm just checking in seeing seeing <laughs> if anybody's good to eat you guys i'm just gonna leave you alone that's fine <laughs> then Sometimes the end goal of the, of the Yuki Ono is not for food. Sometimes it's for marriage. Hang on. I need you to clarify <laughs> sometimes. Like, does she just sometimes take a husband 
And then, like, when he's gone, she's like, all right, it's time to eat again. So I'm just going to go on an eating streak for, like, 50 years. From what I've understood, yeah. The- like, I just, I just want to know the thinking. Like, sometimes she comes down the mountain to terrorize to eat. In other days, it's, it's for marriage. Like, it's a real chill. Like, nice. you just said it so casually. Like, she's just... She's just coming down for this marriage. Well, the marriage parts I've seen, usually they, if she catches two people together, two men up in the mountains, she'll kill the older one, the uglier one, and seduce the younger one in order to marry him. <laughs> so she's a monster with taste. She's like, you're a little ugly, so I'll go ahead and kill you. But you, you can stay because you're cute. Yes, that's seems to be. And then since she, the Yuki Ono doesn't age, usually in a couple of years they figure it out that she, and usually just doesn't end well, as all the stories say. Just, I mean, when you're a boss ass bitch, you're a boss ass bitch. Period. There's nothing. I mean, she just sounds like she's a boss. Yeah, but the Yuki Ono is. We'll go with a little bit of the Sarara before we go into like the media and stuff she's been in. The Sarara is a little bit less chaotic, as in she doesn't really kill people, from what I've seen. But uh, the Sar- right, Sarara is T S U R A R A. I'm guessing that's just because the T's in Japanese, I believe, are usually silent. Spell it again T S U R A R A. Because I know, like, Suyu Asui from My Hero Academia has a T. Yeah, the T is silent, so I would I, I think you're right. Like Surara, I believe, is how I would say it. Which this translates to icicle woman. Another badass. Okay, I got you. Uh yeah, we'll say that. An alternate name for it is the Surara Niobo. Niobo? Its habitats went the snowy areas of Japan. It's usually a little bit more widespread than the mountain passes. Uh, it is still the same image. It's she appears as a beautiful woman, pale white skin, and to you can actually summon one. Kinda. It is said to come about when a man gazes longingly at a strong, beautiful icicle hanging from a roof, and reflects upon his loneliness. How often? It doesn't how say. How often does that happen? <laughs> I want to know how many guys look at an icicle. And are just like, my life sucks ass. <laughs> I just really want to know why the icicle. It has to be a strong, beautiful icicle. Though. It can't be like those little tiny ones. I got So it's got to be like, like a, I'm not going to say that on this podcast, <laughs> but it needs to be like a, a good, like one of those dangerous ones that hangs off your house that looks like it might fall and kill somebody yes. kind of icicle. So you got to look at the powerful icicle and be like, my life sucks. It doesn't say when she'll appear, it just says it may appear shortly afterwards, so it may not even work. I bet, I bet she cares about the size of the icicle. <laughs> I bet she, I bet, I bet that's what she determines. She's like, no, nope. no, nah, he prayed to a weak icicle, we're done. We're done here. Not a strong enough icicle to summon me. Well, we'll get to the icicle again a little bit later. She appears exactly like the Yuki Oda, the beautiful woman. She only appears in the winter storms, and then they usually leave in springtime. And they usually seduce the men in order to gain trust into their household and such. But when springtime comes, they leave without a trace. There was one time a the story says this beautiful woman came into or knocked on this man's house. He invited her in. They fell in love and got married. But the woman stayed out too long in the storm. And the men, man drew her a bath. She did not want to get in this bath, warm bath at all. But her husband made her get in this bath, and when he came back to check on her, all he found was higher bath water and icicles floating in the bath. So a tale, telltale sign that uh, have a either a Sukiyo, or Sukiyono, Surara Ono, or a Yukiono, is they will not get in warm baths. I feel like I am in fact a Surara Ono, because I don't, I don't get in baths. I don't like the warm baths. However, I wonder how many men in Japan were like suspicious and were like, get in the bath. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Just get, just get in the bath. I just want to test. I just want to see something. <laughs> she was like, no. 
Then another story I have of the Sarara Ona was she got married to this other, or she was, yeah, got married to this other man. And she left during the springtime, which she probably melted, be my guess. The spring's coming, icicles are melting. She just left without a trace. He had no clue. So he went down to the other village and fell in love with another woman. And they got married and were living in the same house that he and the Surara Ono was before. And he was looking up at this other icicle again that reminded him of the icicle in the Surara Ono, who he did not know was a Surara Ono. And she just appeared out of nowhere. But she, he didn't really believe that she appeared out of nowhere, I guess. Was surprised where, asked her where she went, where she disappeared to. And his current wife yelled out to him who that was. And he told her pretty much, oh, it's nobody. Nothing's going on out here. And the Surara got angry, turned around and left. And as the husband turned around, from what it said from the story, the wife inside heard a big thunk and a yell. And came out and the husband was impaled by an icicle. I was about to say, this story does not end with that husband getting impaled on an icicle. It was not worth the time because that is fantastic. He deserved every ounce of that icicle stabbing. Every single ounce. Well, he, I don't know if he really had, he deserved. Uh, oh, oh, she don't left, start with me. She, she left for she, an entire year. Okay, but she, she, it's not that she could be like, hey, I'm this icicle demon, so I'm just going to melt for a bit and I'll be back. Like, she couldn't just explain that. And then the fact, it, it, you know, it's not even, I don't even care that he moved on. Like, it can happen, whatever. But the fact that she showed up again, and, the, and then he looked at the other wife and was like, oh, it's nobody. Like, he was just, <laughs> he was married to his wife. And then he was, like, looking at his icicle, like, oh, that reminds me of her. And then she showed up, and he was like, oh, this ain't, this ain't nobody. Ain't a soul. Like, <laughs> no, he deserved, he deserved the icicle pit impaling. I hope it was a great, huge icicle, and I hope he got impaled really good. Well, it'd have to be a, a great strong icicle, like we discussed earlier. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many jokes set up, I can't. Yeah, that was that one case of a guy being stabbed. The Surara is not really the most violent. So don't tell her she ain't shit. If she shows up, you tell her she was everything to you. Yeah. We just gotta wait to the winter and should we go on next spring, summer, and fall? Yeah, but those were the two little bit of info I got about the Icicle Woman and the Snow Woman. One's a little bit more chaos-inducing. Some of the media I found on them, mostly of the Yukiono, which is the more popular of the two specters. Some of the more popular animes that they have Yukionos in as main characters. Rosary plus Vampire as one as a main character, main-ish character. Kimono Jihin, which is kind of like a detective monster yokai anime. And also, Pokemon. Please, please entail those details to me. The Pokemon is actually Frostlass, which is based on Yuki no, Yukiono, but not a beautiful woman, but the Pokemon, hmm. based on its Pokedex description. Some of them, I was just, I got a couple of this Pokedex descriptions of mm -hmm. Frostlass. One of them says it freezes prey by blowing its negative 58 degree Fahrenheit breath. It's said to then secretly dis display its prey. Another one says after a woman met her end on a snowy mountain, her regret lingered on from then. This Pokemon was born. Its favorite food is frozen souls. When it finds humans or Pokemon it likes, it freezes them and takes them to its chilly den where they become decorations. Also, Snow Runt, its evolution before this, is like the Yukinko. I don't know if you remember what Snow Runt looks like, but it is mm -hmm. wearing this canonical straw-like outer exterior. That's true. Like, I wouldn't even have put that together, but you're, you're very right. Yeah, but that's all the little bit of info and stuff I got about them. Uh, I guess we can move on to the chaos, mayhem, madness. Yeah, my favorite part. Favorite part. Do you think the, uh, if these two monsters were real... I believe the Yukiono would probably be the more chaos-inducing of them. Yeah, I mean, by by standard sense, she's she's going to be the one that causes more issues in society. I think they would be more limited than our other monsters, too, because of the colder temperatures. Unless they travel with the winter. Yeah, like, obviously Florida wouldn't have to deal with one. No, maybe they, they can make their own snowstorms, so maybe they can 
uh, just get on a plane and bring snow with them as they go. Okay, but are we counting this as an intelligent being that could get on a plane? Like, do you think she's like a up-to-date modern society monster? I, I would kind of think so, because they can seduce men and be, be their wives for a couple years. Yeah, but I'd say that men in today's society would still be pretty seducted by a woman that is just looking majestic in a mountain somewhere, like hikers. Yeah. Like a hiker stumbled upon her, and they were just like, wow, she looks majestic. Like, she could still seduce them without being a modern woman i guess it is neat to think of her as a modern woman though like she was able to adapt to the lifestyle and just like look like one of us and just get on a plane yeah that's true think of all the deaths and stuff that happened over the years on mount everest up at top she could be yeah. no one would ever know i mean yeah you're right as long because the people who have conquered mount everest never saw anything or died you know so then the people that did die they usually die of being frozen to death which is the uh, way for the Yukiono. I mean, scientifically, it is also understandable how they could freeze to death. But it's yeah. really cool to think that, like, some dude climbed Mount Everest and was just like, wow, she's beautiful. And she was just like, shoop. AKA, bring a friend to Mount Everest that's uglier than you if you're going to climb, just in case. Just, just in, case. in case. She might she might spare you, might take him. It's fine. Imagine the possibilities. Imagine. The, the Serara, I think, would be more widespread. Because they shouldn't just appear in their time with icicles. Not really hindered by the mountain pass habitat. Oh yeah, the Surara, is, its diet is loneliness. He eats loneliness. Oh, so like everybody's gonna die. No, it just eats your loneliness away. So you... Question though. Question though. If we're talking modern day society, if she's a modern day member of society, like if, she, if we were talking about like she looks at what looks like one of us, do you think she's gonna stick to just men? Good question. I don't think because so. Because I feel like there's a lot of of lonely both cis and non-cis females out there as well that'll be like i just feel like i'd be i mean we're also ample food for her now and how often does she need to eat right as often as she wants well i was gonna say could she like gorge herself like she could could she get on a plane and literally just like eat everybody that's depressed soul on the plane or is it like she has to feed once every six months kind of thing? It'd be less devastating if she had to eat every six months, but more interesting if she had to eat every day. It will, It would be less devastating, technically, if she had to eat once every six months, but that also would make her more of a legendary myth. But yeah, I mean, it would be, it would be, I think it'd be more interesting if she ate every six months, because if she eats every six months, it'd be kind of like a Sanderson sisters situation where maybe she's got to lure people up onto the mountain. Or, like we said, just come down and start busting indoors and be like, hey, this is what I'm here she, for. I wonder if she would be able to bust into modern day doors because if you think about the time early Japanese doors, I don't think they had like deadbolts and locks on them. It'd be like Probably just like not. maybe some light wood that she could just kind of push open. But could she pull some Sandman shit and just like flurry snow under the door and then reappear on the other side out of the snow? She can't turn into mist, so I'm going to guess that's a possibility. I'd say she could still get in. She may not be able to kick in the doors, but I'd say she could still get in the houses. You know that snow you tracked in on your boots? It might be a Yuki Ono. Yeah, it's interesting to think. I just, I don't know if it could be, I mean, it'd be interesting either way to see if she just like, and I'd imagine an Im immortality, any immortal creature you like read about, it's like they kind of get bored with life because they've obviously been alive so long. So I'd just be interested to see if she, she like was a gorging if she's nonstop eight, because then I'd feel like she'd be more liable to actually become a part of society where she actually is like learning how to appear human and normal and fit in. As opposed to if she had to eat every six months, she'd still just be that mystical legend on the mountain, you know? Yeah, like you said, with her being immortal, I haven't I didn't really see any way to actually kill her besides making her take a hot bath, which that turn into icicles in the bathtub. I'm sure she'll be avoiding hot tubs and hot springs. Let's to lure people from there. Uh, so basically, if you sus suspect that you have one as a wife, just run her a hot bath. You'll figure it out. Yep, pretty much run her a hot bath, treat her to a spa day. See if your wife's a icicle monster, snow woman. I mean, you find out pretty fast and you don't have to deal with it. Then, you know, you don't have to worry about her being crazy. With that, that's pretty much everything I have to add. Um, unless your wife is the Sue Ra Ra, um, then don't betray her because you'll just get icicles.
I don't think you want to betray your wife. Anyways, because you still probably get icicled, even if she but wasn't like you just said, But like you just said, though, she left for a year. So, like, if your wife just up and leaves for a year, doesn't say anything, and it's casually spring, summer, and fall, maybe wait till winter to move on and see if she's going to come back and try and icicle you. That's the only advice I have. That will be our episode for the day. Join us again next Monday for another episode of Monsters, Myths, and Mayhem where Silver and Chaotic talk about how they came to be and how they would be received in a modern-day society. Follow, like, and subscribe to support. Also, find us on Twitter and Discord with the links below to keep up to date with the newest merchant activity. Besides, who knows what mayhem we'll get into next time. Okay, I'm going to be dramatic for a second, so don't look at me. I'm going to put that in the episode where you're just saying, I'm going to be dramatic. <laughs> you should do it. <laughs> okay, hang on.